Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, I think many of you, the microphone is off, muted. Okay. Can you put the, can you mute the microphone of the attendees so that we, we, we don't get the noise? So please put your microphone mute in mute mode. Okay. Okay, so let let me begin. Okay, thank you. So today we have actually 56 uh, persons who register, 56 attend, uh, registrants, but at the moment we have about, uh, we have 31 now. 31 attendees who already check in to Zoom. And I can see many of you. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, so I send you the guideline about how to use the Zoom, the webinar. So if I try to speak uh, at this speed, and if you have any questions during my presentation, so you can raise your hand by pressing the button on the participants window. There's a small button called, uh, that's written raise hand. So if you press, I can see who is, uh, who wants to ask a question or you just send me in the chat so I can see, I can read here. I think uh, chat is better. So let me start the uh, talk today. So today, the, I, I suppose that you can see the PowerPoint file now. And today's uh, my talk is about the GNSS data processing. And actually this was based on the request from some of our participants from um, Vietnam and also from India who attended our training in Thailand and and some other uh, requests from other places. Okay, so I put the screen in the full mode, full, full screen. So the very first thing, I, I, I received the email that some of you had a problem of installing the use center, uh, the software itself. So many of you have a UBlox receiver and this presentation is based on how to use UBlox receiver for our TK processing. And we, we need to have a UBlox receiver. And I, I suppose that some of you have uh, this type of receiver. So this is a this very small, this U-Blocks receiver, which can be used for RTK. I suppose that some of you already have this type of receiver, but some of you, you don't have it. So anyway, so today's talk program is based on how to set up this receiver and how to do the RTK using the RTK Deep software. So the very first topic is now I will show you some slides on setting up this uh, receiver and the software because I received the email that you had problems to set up this receiver.
Okay, so wh when you connect this receiver to your computer, you, you co computer, sometimes you cannot access this one. It doesn't work. And the first thing is you have to install the uCenter software, which you download from the uBlox. And after you finish installing this software, so, uh, sorry, not after you finish, but when you are installing, you should get this type of message, what you want to install. For example, you want to install uCenter, and also it asks what type of drivers you want to install. So please select Windows USB serial driver, and this will install all the necessary driver for Windows. But it still, sometimes it doesn't work. There are some problems depending upon the OS or some other issues with your computer. But anyway, this is the procedure to install. So please install the software like this. And you can use this software even if you don't have uBlox receiver. So any other receiver that outputs uh, GPS data, NMEA sentence data, so this software can use. So you install this software, which is freely, you can download freely from uBlox. So I think I gave the, 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 this website here. So you can download the software from here. And after you download, you install it. And you can use this software, even if you don't have a uBlox with some other receivers, if you can connect those receivers to your computer. So after you download, after you install, so you run the software, you connect the receiver, and you will see this very small button here. Some, some attendees maybe you have, if you have a slow network, the slide may not be displayed eight. So this is slide number five. So you, I, I suppose that now you have slide number five on your computer. <clears throat> so you can see this very small button here. And if you press, this will show you all the serial ports that your computer has. And then you really don't know which serial port is this device connected. So you just try one of these, or you can remove the receiver, and then you check this without the receiver, and then again you connect the receiver and check the port. So you will you can see which is the added, added port here, and then you just select that port so you can connect the receiver. So this is one way to do this. So if everything goes well, it should work. But if it doesn't work, then it's a little bit, uh, you need to do follow some other procedures that I will explain later uh, in the next slide. So actually, so this is the way to, to, to connect your receiver. Press this button, select the COM port. So in my case, uh, this was like, for example, it's 20. And if I select this, then you will see the, this light here, this is blinking. So this blinking will tell you that your receiver is now communicating with the computer. So this is how you can see. And also then you will see some signals, the signals uh, power coming up in, the, in this window and you will see many other display. So we go to slide six. Uh, this is about if it doesn't work, so how to troubleshoot your comport. Okay. So in slide seven, so we have now the details of uh, troubleshoot, the how to solve your problem of uh, setting up the receiver if it doesn't work after you install it. So the first thing you have to do is you have to that uh, get uh, run the device manager, okay? You run the device manager. So in your computer, if you run the device manager, then you will see the port list, home port list, and also you will see the sensor, okay? Sensor and you will see uBlocks, GNSS location sensor. So if you don't see like uBlocks virtual port or 
USB serial device. If you don't see this type of thing, probably you cannot connect your receiver. So what you have to do in this case is uh, you, you click this button. You click the right button here and you reinstall by clicking, clicking the, your right button here, U-Blox location sensor. You click here and then you, it will ask you what you want to do, whether you want to remove the device or whether you want to reinstall the driver. So it will ask you. So the next slide shows some of the steps that you have to do. For example, if you press the right button, then you will get a menu of the driver or disable uninstall like this. And you just do the update the driver, update driver software and go to, okay. and then don't, don't select automatic search. It will not help you. So you select the browse my computer for drivers, the manual way, and then again, you select, let me pick from a list of device drivers. Okay. Don't, don't select this one. Just go to let me pick from a list of device drivers. And then you will see this list, like a few blocks location sensor, USB serial device. So what you need to install is USB serial device. So install this device, it should work then because the, Location sensor is already installed in your device, so you don't have to do it. So select USB serial device. And once you select this, then, then you can see the, in the device manager, you can see the ad additional, oh, sorry, the additional COM port here. So this is your USB serial device. Then you can see this list and not the uh, COM port. So this is COM port 10, COM 10. So in the next uh, U center, you can select this device and connect your receiver. So this is how we can solve the problem of the, uh, the driver driver problem or comport setting problem in the uh, U center. So after doing this, then you go back again, press this button, you connect the receiver and press this button, then you should see your new drive here, new device here, and select this one, then it should work. Okay. So you can then see this green lights which is coming up. So this is all about how to set up a U-Blox driver. I think those who don't use a U-Blox receiver or those who don't have a U-Blox receiver, probably they, they, it's uh, not so useful for them, but you can still use this software for other receivers. So please try by you download and try. So how do we have some noise here? Please, please put your mic in the mute mode. Okay, okay, it's clean now. Okay, so this is how we solve the problem of the this driver issues and setting up the receiver. So I, I am not sure whether this information is useful for you or not. And some of you have this problem and I think they already solved or still, if you still have a problem, so let me know and we can try it uh, later. So let me go to other part. So do you have any questions or some, some something to ask?
Sorry. Okay, so somebody said that they can't see the slide. So if you can't see my slides now, so I send you the PowerPoint file, the PDF file, so you can follow those PDF files. I will tell you which slide number I am referring. So you just look at the, okay. How much wire length of an antenna can be maximum? Okay, so this question is uh, the length of the antenna cable. So normally you should not have very long cable. Very long means uh, normally we use uh, 10 meters or like that. If you use a very long cable, you have a loss, cable loss, and your signal will become very weak. For example, in this case, I have put uh, antenna here. This is about three meters of cable. But for this type of very thin cable, the loss is very high. So I think this one is about uh, maybe 10 meters or like that is okay. But if you want to extend more than 10 meters from antenna to your receiver, you have to have a cable which is a little bit thicker than this. And I don't, I think about 15 to 20 meters is no problem. But if it is more than 20 meters, probably you will have a cable loss and the signal that comes into your receiver is very weak. Then you don't see good signal level. So I can send you the details about how, how long the cable should be. And if you have a, for example, sometimes you have to put antenna on the roof and your receiver is in the room and that length may be about 50 meters. So what shall you do? So in such cases, if your length, cable is very thin one and if you have a very big loss and if you can't see good signal either you have to change the cable with the low loss cable which is a bit thick or you have to put an amplifier in between we we call it a line amp so you can buy a small amp that will amplify the signal and you put it near the antenna and it will amplify the signal and then you send it to the receiver okay so this is one way. This is one of the solutions to, to handle with a very long cable. Uh, so, okay. So there's another question that whether U blocks is used for dead reckoning techniques for data recording. Uh, dead reckoning, yes. Uh, I think there are some cases of using the some people they use for dead reckoning, but you you I, I don't understand why you want to use a GPS receiver for dead reckoning. Because dead reckoning is the actually it's not the absolute measurement, it's just a relative uh, position data. So you can have uh, the actual actual values, absolute values. So you really don't need to do the dead reckoning. But if you want to do like I use inertial measurements we use for dead reckoning and it can help. So if you combine GPS and IMU, so it can help for dead reckoning to give the total absolute values, absolute position output. So those type of integrations so we, we use to, to assist the IMU sensors, other sensors. Like sometimes you don't see GPS for some time and during those blank period, so your sensor device like IMU will help you to get the position data, but you need to have a GPS at certain interval. So of course, yes, we can use uh, GPS or U-Blox GPS in general for dead reckoning. In the dead reckoning system to give you the real actual position value. Okay, is there any other questions until now? Is U-Blocks 8.27 provider of data? No, this, uh, this version 8.27, this is the software. So the software is, it, it doesn't depend on the software, it depends on the hardware. So if you need uh, raw data, you have to buy the mo proper model 
like they have a U blocks uh, like this one. So this is a, a M M A T. Okay, so I can write here. Uh, so you have to buy either M eight T or M eight T series receiver. So only so certain type of receivers they output the raw data, not all the receivers. And those receivers that output the raw data, it's a little bit expensive. For example, this M eight T. If you buy this type, this is about eighty dollars, and if you buy M eight P. It's about two hundred dollars, okay. but if you buy the receiver that doesn't output raw data, it's much cheaper, maybe twenty dollars or thirty dollars like that. Okay, so you have to choose a receiver which can output the raw data. So in in my case, I use a uh, T, or you can also use a little bit older version M six T. Okay, the T series all output raw data. Which is which is uh, necessary for RTK. Okay, so we move on to the next part of the uh, today's lecture, and this is about how to set up your UBlox receiver to log the raw data. Okay. Yes, yeah, there's another question that, yes, we can use MAT uh, for the basic station as well. So it's up to you how you want to use it as a basic station device, receiver, or rover. So you can use it both. But the way you have to set up is a little bit different. Uh, so let me go to the next part. OK, how to set up your UBlox receiver for for to get the raw data for RTK. So before going that, so let me give some explanation about what type of data you get from a receiver. For example, any GPS receiver, they output different types of data. It depends on the type of the receiver, manufacturers, and, and uh, different uh, buzzer. For example, PVT data, so this is position, velocity, and time, almost all the receivers, they provide this because GPS is designed for PVT data, so they, they provide this by any type of receiver, whether you buy a very low cost or high cost or any other type. So you get position, velocity, and time. These three informations, all the receivers they provide. And most of those receivers, they also provide the data in the NMEA format. This is very standard. And, but the raw data, when we say raw data, so our meaning of raw data is pseudo range, carrier phase, and Doppler. So these are the three things that we, we need for RTK to do the high, high accuracy processing. But all the receivers, they don't provide it because you don't need it. All the people don't need to use raw data. It's, they, they just need a position data which is uh, which is a standard output from the gps but if you want to do some error correction some uh, uh, do the rtk or some other type of correction to have a high accuracy using the basic system data then you need all these raw data shooter range carrier phase and sometimes doppler or doppler so basically we use these two pseudo range and carrier phase or pseudo range is sometimes also called code phase a code phase and carrier phase but only certain type of receivers, they output this data. And those receivers that output raw data are a little bit expensive as also. And these data are output in various format. It may be like a standard proprietary format of the manufacturer, or it may be the Rhinex. This is the, so I, I suppose that many of you know what is Rhinex 5. So this is the receiver independent exchange format. So regardless of the makers, they use the same format to output the raw data. So if you have a Rhinex, then you can uh, combine this file with any other uh, data from other receivers. So we need the raw data in the Rhinex file. And also we need navigation data. Navigation data means this is about the satellite 
uh, orbit. We call that the satellite ephemeris almanac and clock data, satellite clock data, and also the satellite healthy status. So this information we need uh, also from the receiver to do RTK. So some receivers, they don't provide raw data, they don't provide navigation messages. But if you want to do it, you have to have at least the raw data, navigation messages, satellite data, you can download from some other sources as well. And some receivers, they also provide some of these data like uh, satellite related data. So if you have an enemy output, you can see this data. This is the type of uh, satellites that are being used to, to compute the position data, their azimuth elevation and the signal power. So these informations, you can get it from the enemy data. And many receivers, they output it. And of course, the signal quality, you always see the CN0 in the receiver. You know that how many, how, how good is your signal. And some special receivers, they also output like uh, noise data or some other receiver related very specific proprietary informations, which is probably not so necessary to do uh, raw, raw data process, uh, I mean the RTK processing, but they, they, they can be used for some other special uh, processing. But for our purpose, we need this raw data, the pseudo range carrier phase and the satellite ephemeris data and clock data. So these four informations, if we have, then we can do the RTK. So in order to set up your receiver for, to log the RTK, so what you have to do is, of course, first you have to connect the receiver and you connect your computer and receiver. Then you, okay, this is how to connect, you press this button, which we explain, and select the COM port. Okay, and then also you set the speed, maybe 115, 200, uh, or you can select the higher rate. And then you select, uh, you can check here whether it's working or not. So uh, I'm now on slide number 16. So I suppose that all of you can see slide 16 on your computer. Okay. And then, and then we have to select the satellites that you want to use for RTK. So in order to do that, on the left, this one, so you have two headers, NMEA and UBX. So you select UBX, and here you will see GNSS config, okay? So in this GNSS config, if you press this button, then you get this menu. So here you can select the satellites that you want to use for your RTK. For example, by default it has some settings, so you can change or select. So you can select the satellites, GPS, SPAS, Galileo, uh, Beidou, IMS, and not IMS, QGSS, or GLONASS, one of these. But uh, please note that in UBLOX, you can use either Beidou or GLONASS. So you can't use Beidou and GLONASS together. So you have to select either Beidou or GLONASS. So normally we use, in Asia, we use GPS, uh, Beidou, and the QGSS, and Galileo, or just the GPS, Beidou, and QGSS. So this gives better result than GLONASS. But for Europe, or other part of the world, so I'm not sure which combination is better. So we have to try. So what you have to do is first you select here the satellites that you want to use, and then you make it enable. Then you select here to make the satellites enable, and just keep this number of channels uh, as a default. The system will take care of it but you have to enable or disable here. After you do this, then you press this button again with the right, right mouse key, and this will give you 
a menu whether you want to send the command or not. So for example, I can show you here, uh, but you can see now. Anyway, so you have to send this command after you set up and you, if you press here, you will get it. So you just say enable the message or enable the command. So this is how we select the satellite. And after you do select these satellites, then one more thing is then you have to select the raw data. So I'm now in slide 18. So in this UVX, so you can see in the U center, RXM receiver manager, and here you can see multi GNSS raw measurement data. So this data is necessary for RTK. So once your receiver is working, you can see all these raw data coming here if you enable this one. So please make sure that this is enabled. And you can see here, which is a dark color, they are enabled, which is gray, light color, they are not enabled because we don't need all of this data. So we just enable which is required. So press this one and you can see all these and you press the right button, then you, you can, you, you will have option to make it enable. Once you do this, you see all the satellites and the signals, L1, CA, Beidou, GPS, Beidou, uh, Galileo, and uh, QG. So all these satellites will be enabled, and you will see the shooter range, carrier phase, Doppler, and uh, I don't know what is this, I have to check. And uh, this is a signal power, okay? And some errors in the shooter and carry phase and Doppler or things. So all these informations are displayed here. So those data will be logged in our, in our file. Okay, so this is one thing. And also we need to do, we need to log for the navigation data. So navigation data is coming here in the subframe data, SFRBX. So if you click this, so we can log the navigation data. I think this is the next slide. Okay, yeah. So next, after you set up the raw data, so click this one, then you can see the navigation data coming here. Okay, for example, for Beidou, the Chinese system, Galileo, European system, and the GPS. So we can see all the navigation data coming here. So this includes, this data includes ephemeris and uh, clock data, satellite clock data. So you can log all this by enabling it. Okay, so if you press the right button, you see enable message or disable message. So you can enable by pressing the right mouse button here and log all the data. So by doing this type of setup, you can now log the raw data that is necessary for RTK. So we have all the necessary data, raw measurement data, and the satellite related data here. And we log all this for RTK. And the next one, and after you this, so next time, when you connect the receiver next time, so you want to use the same configuration. You don't want to do this every time. Okay? You just do it once and save the configuration. So you can do this by going to receiver, and you go to action and do the save config command. So this will help you to remember all your settings that you use, and this will remain inside the memory of the receiver. And even if you remove the power, it will be still there. So next time when you connect, so the receiver, the software will just use the same configuration, the last configuration. If you don't do this save, the receiver will not keep it. So when you connect next time, you have to set up again. So please remember to save it so that you can have the same configuration every time you use. This is very important. So this is how we save the settings so that you can use for next time. And then after we save all, I, after we set all, then either you click the file and save the file, or you click this red button. This is the record. 
So this will record all the all the necessary data for RTK by pressing this button. And you log the data as long as you want. And we are logging the data for our RTK in the post-processing mode. So if you want to do in real time, so it's a little bit different. We don't need to log the data because we are using in real time. But for post-processing, we have to log the data. We go back to the office, then we use the destination data to do the processing. So this is the procedure to set up the raw data and to log the raw data. Okay, so I think we have the more or less. Okay, so we log this, and there are a few slides that we have to remember. And normally, the UBlocks receiver or many receivers they output the data at one hertz. That means you get output every one second. Okay. But for RTK, if you are moving, if you are driving, if you have a high dynamics, like you are moving very fast, so it's better to have the output at a little bit high rate. For example, about five hours or 10 hours, but it depends on the receiver, whether your receiver supports it or not. So if you buy Ublox M8T, it supports up to 10 hours, and we can set like this. So you go to UBX, CFZ, and rate, and here, okay, you, you see the red here. So I just enlarge this window here. And normally, the default is 1,000 millisecond. That means it's one hertz, okay, one cycle. That means you get one output, one second. Every second, you get one output. But if you put 200, that's 200 millisecond. And this means you get five outputs every second at the rate of five hours. This is five hours means you get uh, five output. So normally when I do RTK, when I log the data for RTK, I log at a five hours output rate so, so that I have uh, uh, good data for even for uh, when I'm driving in the car or train or like that. So we log the data at five hours by changing the setups here. And yes, and this is all the process that is required to log the data in the U-blocks for RTK, you, you log the raw data. So, okay, let, let me have a brief uh, break here to have some of your questions. Probably some of you have uh, some questions here because you had some problem in logging the data and setting up. So if you have questions, so can you send me? Yeah, the channel max mean, so you just set the default, that's, that's enough. I think it, it doesn't affect our accuracy or nothing to do with it. Just use the default. Okay, so this is a good question. Why cannot be GLONASS and Beidou track at the same time? Okay, the main reason this is not uh, the system problem. This is the receiver design limitation. I think the U-Blox receiver is designed to, uh, the, the U-Blox receiver is designed to receive the signal from all the satellites. But inside its uh, uh, the RF part, I mean, in the antenna that we call the RF, when we down convert the signal from RF to IF in the antenna portion, I think the front end they have has some limitations. So either they use the, they can allocate that uh, hardware for Beidou or GLONASS. I think this is the reason. 
That's why in, in this specific receiver, we can't receive both together. Because the GLONASS and Beidou, the frequency is a little bit different. And if you look at the frequency range uh, for GPS, QZ, and the Galileo, we have a common signal, and that is a L1 band, which is, uh, I am writing here, L1, 1575.42, megahertz okay this is for gps uh, qgss and uh, what else galileo galileo e1 gps l1 and qgss l1 and galileo e1 Okay, so the frequency for GPS QZ Galileo, we have a common signal at 1575.42 megahertz, but the Beidou B1 and uh, also the GLONASS is FDMA, and the frequency is not 1575.42. They are a little bit different from this frequency. So when they design that this uh, analog part in the receiver, so they probably had some limitations and they designed either to use GLONASS or Beidou. So I think that's a one design limitation in the receiver in the U-Blocks MST. But if you buy some other receivers, like a little bit, but they are more expensive, they can receive all the signals at the same time. This is the, the MST limitation. Okay, can UBX file be used in RTK? So that we'll discuss after this, after this. So that's my other part. Okay, dynamic data recording, what is the best speed of moving vehicle? Uh, no, there is no such best speed or worst speed because for GPS, it doesn't matter. You can drive, uh, you, you can just stay there without zero, I mean, without moving. It's the, it doesn't affect the quality. And even if you are driving at 100 kilometer, 200 kilometer, or at a, like an aircraft, okay, the speed is 800 kilometers per hour, and it still, it, it still works. So it doesn't ma make any difference. Okay, so if you are driving, when you're driving fast, ah, okay. There's one setup in the U blocks, so you have to check. In U blocks, there's a, uh, one option in the setting of the receiver whether you are setting it for static mode or the walking mode, pedestrian mode, or the car or ship or aircraft. So please check. Probably you, your receiver by default is in the static mode. So move, change it to dynamic mode or the car mode and you should not uh, have uh, the problem that you are having now. So please change that mode to dynamic or car. It doesn't say dynamic, it says car, ship, or aircraft, or pedestrian, or static. So don't keep it static or pedestrian, make it a dynamic or car mode. That, that will solve your problem. And yes, okay. Okay, so if you don't have any more questions, so let me go to um, the next part. Okay, so now we move to the, the uh, another part of the presentation. So this is how to convert from UVX to RINEX. Okay, now this is using the RTK Leap software. I'm not sure whether you have ever used RTK Leap software or not. Uh, you can download this software from the internet. This is free and this is very popular. Many people who 
are using Arctic Leaf, they are using this software. I mean, who are using RTK, they are using this software, RTK Leaf, and it's very, very useful. And if, and this RTK Leaf, how to use and how to install and the details, we have a webinar uh, after, on, 20, on the 1st of June, 1st of June and 8th of June by Professor Kubo. So he is an expert on this. So he will tell you if you attend on 1st June and 8th of June, he will give you a very detailed explanation on how to use RTK Leaf, how to do the uh, uh, post-processing RTK, how to do real-time RTK in those two webinars on 1st June and 8th June. So please register if you want to uh, know how to use RTK in detail. But today, I will just show you uh, how to convert the UVX data to Rhinox data using RTK Leaf and how to do the post processing in a very brief manner. So, this is the RTK Leaf menu. So, once you install RTK Leaf and if you run it, you get like this. This is the version 243 beta 26. And we have, RTK Leaf has lots of things to do, uh, many functions that can be done. And this one, the RTK convert, can be used to convert the data from one format to another format. So we use RTK convert to convert from UVX to RANX, because to use RTK, we have to convert the data from UVX format to RANX format. So we use RTK convert, and once you run the RTK convert, so you get okay, this type of menu. And there are so many things here. So the first thing is you have to select your input file. Input file means your observation file or UVX file. Okay. So you select your UVX file by pressing this button, number two. And you tell the computer what is the format. So you press this format button, you see all the lists, U blocks, and many other receiver. You select this, and then automatically it will list the observation files and navigation files here, and you just make it enable. Okay. So let me go to the next slide. Okay. So this is how it looks like. If you press the format button, so you see all the formats that is possible that is possible to convert in RTK leaf. So you have u blocks, so many different types of receivers here. So you can use all those to convert from their native format to standard uh, Rhinox format. And you will see the file names automatically here. Rhinox observation file, navigation file. This OVS means observation, NAV means navigation. And there are so many other files for different satellite systems. And also, then you have to choose what type of Rhinox person you want to use. And this one, this menu, you can access by pressing the option button. Oh, yeah. Okay. You see the option button. Okay. If you press option, then you get this menu. And here you tell the system what, which person of Rhinox you want like Rhinox 2.12 or 2.10, and the new versions are like a three, version three, they are completely different from version two. So you select one of those versions that you want to have it, and the new versions, they include the new signals of the new satellites. The old versions, they don't include. So this is the difference. So you can use a 3.03 or even the old versions are okay for U blocks because we have only uh, standard signals in U blocks in L1 band. So 2.12 is good enough. But if you want to see how it looks like, you can just select different type of version and check the output file. Okay. After you select the version, then you select which satellites you want to convert. For example, in our case, because I don't log GLONASS, so I have GPS, Galileo, QGSS, Beidou. 
okay. as fast I can include. And then also I can select code phase, C is code phase, here I, wrote, I have written, C is code phase, L carry phase, D is Doppler, S is a SNR, or sometimes we also call the CN0. And also we can select which signal, L1, L2, L5, L6, all these things. But unfortunately our receiver u blocks is only L1. This is single frequency, low cost receiver. So we have only L1, so we just make L1 enable. And after you select all these, just press OK. And then we, then we execute, we convert, and then we can see the Rhinox file. And if you open the Rhinox file, so the format is like this. Okay, so it's a bit difficult to understand by looking at it, but once you are used to it, the Rhinox file, you know what it means. So this is the observation file, which has a pseudo range and carrier phase for all the visible satellites, like a GPS E is a European Galileo, J is a Japanese QGSS, B is a Beidou, uh, no, no, this S is a S bus and C is a Chinese uh, Beidou system. And this is for the observation file that has a pseudo range carrier phase uh, things. And this is the navigation data. Okay. So here you can see in the header GNSS navigation data. And here is the observation data. Okay. So we, we always need two files, observation file and navigation file. So this looks like this. So we, we convert to from UBX to Rhinox and that's all. So then we are ready to do the RTK post-processing. And some of you had a problem here that you could not convert from UBX to Rhinox. So if you can't get from UBX to Rhinox, that means you didn't log the necessary data in the UBX. And that was a problem when you set up your U, U, U box receiver. So probably you didn't set up to log the raw data. Or if you don't log the navigation data, you get only the observation file and you don't get the navigation file. So if this happens to you, navigation data you can download from some other places. Uh, like um, we have many IGS stations or our ABN stations and all. So because this is the satellite data, so whether you download from a site A or site B, it doesn't matter. And once you down, once you convert the Rhinox into Rhinox format, then you can check by doing this RTK plot to see where how your data looks like. So you just run the RTK, uh, press the RTK plot. Okay. So and then, but this RTK leave probably for the new users is a little bit not so user friendly because there are very small icons that's difficult to see and you press this button, okay? Then you get this window, a lot of things here. And again, you can select which satellites you want to check. So you select, if you want all, just make all enable. And then, and here, you, you don't have, you can either use the file to open the file, observation file, or you can just uh, drag and drop. This is very good. So you just go to the, your browser, and I mean the, your drive folder, and you just drag the file from there to this window. So it will automatically read the file and display the data. So if everything is good, you will see something like this. So this is one of the plot. It's a satellite visibility. So which satellites are visible for how long? This is the time. And this is the number of satellites, the visible satellites. And this is a sky plot, the elevation and azimuth. So you can see how the satellites are visible in the sky. And then you can have many different types of plots, SNR, multipath, okay. And 
Okay, so, so this is how you can check your data. But to see whether this data is good or bad to analyze, there are so many things we have to do it. And in today's lecture, so we don't, we don't go to such a deep level. So probably on 1st of June and 8th of June, we'll have more details on this type of data analysis or quality check and all. Or we can do some other time. And this is to how to get the basic system data. So now you have the robot data. So you have a data from your field receiver, but in order to do RTP, you also need the reference data. We call the basic system data. So you have to have a basic system data from somewhere. Either you have to ask someone who provided data in your area, or you have to have your own basic station or you can use one of those IGS stations. But the problem is that those basic system data may be very far away from where you log the data. If your receiver, your receiver and your basic station is very far, very far means if it's more than 50 kilometer, probably you don't get very good high quality, I mean high accuracy output. So your accuracy will be maybe a few tens of centimeters or maybe around one meter sometimes. Okay. You can't have a 10 centimeters or two centimeters of accuracy. So if you need the accuracy within 10 centimeter, your base, the distance between your base and the rover it shall be less than uh, 20 kilometer or 10 kilometer for U blocks in this case. So your distance will, shall be very, very small. So anyway, but uh, like, in, in Tokyo and some countries, so we have our own base stations and we can use those stations data to do some field work nearby your base station or in your university. So we have to have the base system data and there are two ways to access it. If you want to do in real time, you need an entry address of the base station. So you have to ask the provider please give me entry address, mount port ID, mount point, login ID, and password. So these five information you have to ask to your provider if you want to do it in real time. But if you want to do the post-processing, you just get the data by email or FTP, or you just access their server, and you need the IP address, login, and password to access their data, and you just download. So this is simple. But if you want to do in real time, you need all these five informations. And we have like some countries like Indonesia, Myanmar, and few countries. We have our own basic system in the universities. And for example, this is in Tokyo. You, you can see the IP address. If you type this address, you can access our basic station. And if you have a login and password, you can access our data. And you can download this data to your computer by pressing the button here. You can convert into Rhinox and download at your site. So this is how we can access the basis in data. You see, if you press this button, so you have an option of Rhinox button, and you also have an option of what data you want to download. But this is a very receiver. This is in the case of a Trimble. So other receiver, they may have a different menu and different types of different ways of downloading the data. And this is my last part of presentation. So let me finish this and then uh, it's already 7, 7 p.m. here. Let me finish this and then we'll have a QA. So this is the, uh, the last part and this will tell you how to do the RTK post-processing. Okay. So again, we have to, we use the RTK leaf and this menu, this icon is for RTK processing. So if you press this icon, so in, we can, this is slide number 38. And then you see, uh, we can do the RTK post-processing, you get this menu and Basically, you have to input two files. One is Rhinox observation file, okay, and for the rover, and then the basic system file 
observation file at the base station and the navigation file. So three files, two observation file, one for rover, one for base station, and one navigation file. Okay. These three you have to input. So press this button here, and this will prompt you to input the rover data. And this button prompts you to input the base station data, and this one prompts you for the navigation data. And when you press this button, normally we have the observation data and navigation data with the same name. But in some cases, our navigation data file may be different from the observation data. If it is so, then you have to select automatically. Uh, I mean, you have to select manually. Otherwise, it takes automatically the navigation file. So you have to prepare basic system data, Rhinex observation file, and uh, uh, yes, for basic station, you need two files, observation file and the navigation file. For the rover, you need the observation file. And if you also have a navigation for the rover, you can use it, one of those files. But normally, I use a basic system uh, navigation file, and observation file, and rover is observation file. So these three files, we need to do the RTK. So after doing this, then there's many settings here. You have to press the option button again. So press option button. So once you press this button, then you get this window. You see options and many sub menus, setting one, two, many settings here. So the minimum settings we have to do is setting one and say for kinematic. This is for RTK kinematic mode. Okay, you select this one and also select the satellites that you want to use. For example, GPS, Galileo, QG, and Beidou. Okay. Or you can just select GPS and you do the RTK. And next time you select GPS and QGSS and you do the RTK. And you can have a different combination of satellites and you do the RTK and you check the output, how it looks like for every different types of settings. And for setting one, you select the positioning mode, static, all this, one of these. So select the kinematic, in this case for RTK. And you go to setting two, and you select the integer ambiguity resol uh, res resolving mode. So uh, we select instantaneous, fix and hold, or continuous. So <clears throat> They, they, they have a different way of solving the ambiguity resolution, but normally I use uh, instantaneous or fix and hold. Okay, you can select one of them and see how it works actually. Okay, and then we have to say one more. And in the output, you can log the output data in the NMA format or other format. And, and this output, and in the Position data, you have to give the basis station coordinate. <coughs> yeah. So, if you don't know the basis station coordinate data, you can use one of these options, but your accuracy will not be very good. So, you have to ask also the basis station coordinate. Sorry. <coughs> So when you get when you ask for the basis system data, so also ask for the basis system coordinate, so that you can write here what are the coordinates in the latitude, longitude, and height. And if you don't have that, of course you can do like average of single positioning, or you can do some pre-processing of the basis system observation file, but your accuracy may not be so good. Okay, so please remember to have basis system coordinate data as well. And after, after we get all these, then we are ready for the post-processing. So I go back some few slides. And after you set up everything like this here, okay, you also set up the output file, the solution where you want to send. 
then you press the execute button, then it will really start processing and output, make a out, create an output file, and you get this type of output. Now, we have some sample data uh, you can download from the website that I provided you in the training folder. And for example, we have different type of sample data. This is using base and ROBA, that R9. This is a very high-end receiver, very expensive receiver, okay, very high-end. So the RTK output is like this. We have all the fixed solution and some float. And the grid is 50 centimeter, okay. So the accuracy is, uh, uh, this is the same data. So I just zoom the green points because these are the RTK fixed output and the grid is one centimeter. So we have accuracy of, you see, within five centimeter, okay, very high. And maybe this is maybe one to around, yes, two or three centimeters like that. Very, very high accuracy. But in this case, we also have a very high end or expensive receiver. But we want to do with the low cost, very cheap receiver. And we want to see how good the accuracy. So we need want to compare the accuracy from this very expensive receiver to very cheap receiver. Okay. Now, in this case, we have a base, the expensive base station data, and the cheap uh, rover data. And you see now the points are a little bit scattered. And here, but if we take only the fixed point, only the green points, which are the RTK fixed solution, we still have this one centimeter grid and our accuracy is like a, very similar to the previous one, but it is a little bit uh, lower. But again, it's within the five centimeter accuracy. Okay. So it's, it's quite good, even if we use a very low cost receiver, because this Neta 9 is maybe the cost is very, very high. For example, it may be say $10,000, but you blocks maybe just $100. And you see the accuracy doesn't differ much. But still, we want to have a very low cost, very cheap receiver here, both base and rover. So in that case, so what will be our accuracy? Now you see base and rover, both very low cost, $100 and $100. And still we see something very similar to the previous one. And we still have a five centimeter of accuracy. So this shows that you can have a very high accuracy even using very low cost receivers these days. One of the reasons is because we can use GPS, many different types of satellite systems, GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, Galileo, and we combine all those signals and they give you quite, quite good accuracy. You can see now one centimeter accuracy, I mean a uh, few centimeters accuracy, even with a low cost and low cost. But one point we have to note here is this. We, in this case, our distance between the base station and rover is very near. It's in the same building. But even if we go far away, within 10 kilometers, so this accuracy will not degrade beyond 10 or 20 centimeters. So we can we still have accuracy of about 10 to 20 centimeter, even if we move about 10 kilometers away from the base station. So this is the point we want to highlight. We have those data as well, but today I, 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 I didn't include here. And just to compare, so we have a, this high-end and high-end, very high accuracy. You see the points, okay, very, it doesn't have a very scattering points. So all the points are here. But in the case of the high and low, low-end, high-end and low-end, so, we have actually here, but some points they fly away. Okay, so a little bit bad. But if we are doing the post processing, so if we take only the points, so we, we still have a very high accuracy. But as you can see, since these two antennas are at the same location, you should have the same coordinate. Okay, this must overlap, but they don't here because there are some other errors, some other systematic errors here. But uh, anyway, this will happen even if you use uh, two high-end receivers and offer different make makers or different uh, types. 
So this type of shift you will see in many cases unless you do some other corrections. So in this case, we just use a very simple RTK using observation and navigation files, and we try to remove all the common errors, and we get this type of very high accuracy. But when we compare from one set of data to another set of data, we see a little bit shift in the actual absolute coordinate uh, values. Okay, so this is all for today's lecture. <clears throat> so we cover so many things in a very short time. And I suppose that many of you who are already using uBlocks or RTK Leave or some doing some uh, GPS signal processing, maybe you could understand something from this, but some of you who don't have a uBlocks receiver or who are not using or who, are, who don't have a experience of logging the data yourself or processing the data yourself, uh, I'm not sure whether this is, uh, you could understand or not. But anyways, you can at least understand that we can use even a very low cost receiver to have a very high accuracy nowadays because of the, this change in all these uh, the, the satellite systems. So new signals are coming, new systems are coming. So if we use a receiver that can receive many signals, we can have a high accuracy. So this is the point that we want to highlight. Okay, so we can have all the QA and discussions. And now, and let's see how much I can answer and what else I have. Okay, these are some reference slides to tell you what are the data formats and what they contain. Okay, please just check my handout so I don't go to details. Okay, so there's one very recent question. How to record raw and UBX data from the UBX? So this is what I explained, okay, the, in the middle of the presentation. So please, you have to check my slide again. So all the explanations we gave already. And this number three, is it possible to establish a basic system using U-blocks, MA2 receiver? Yes, we can do that. We can do that, but you need to have a, this, I think we have to talk again in detail. So, but in short, yes, we can have a uh, basic system. You see this one in this slide. Uh, no. So, this one you see U blocks and U blocks. So, we have U blocks basic system and U blocks rover. It is possible to set up MHP or also MHT. We can do that. And which output format shall be set to obtain atmospheric climate parameter information? So I don't understand what do you mean by atmospheric and climate parameter. So we can have uh, some atmospheric gas. So I think this is uh, given here. Uh, let me see. No, not here. You see some of the files. So today I discuss on the observation file and the navigation file file, but here we can provide some other additional information. And like uh, this is a <clears throat> high precision ephemeris data, FCB, IONX. This is the uh, uh, this is atmospheric data. Okay, I, I, ionospheric data. So all those informations they can be input here you can provide some other additional informations if you have. So they can be put here. But you need to get those data uh, either yourself or you need to get the data from somewhere else. There are so many data that we can provide, additional data. But as long as you are using U-blocks, so these data do not help you much. So if you are using the high-end, multi-frequency receivers, then it makes some sense. But I don't think even if you use those data, so it, it will help you to improve the accuracy to much. 
So for you blocks, I, I don't think you, you need to have, uh, you need to worry about providing such a very detailed data or detailed information. Okay, to how to set up the MAT for base and rover in detail. So I have to prepare a detailed documentation for this. So maybe we have to do some other time. So in this Q&A within the five or 10 minutes is probably not possible. So we'll do some other time. So please attend when we do this webinar next time that focus only on the setting up the uh, base and rover stations using the UBLOX MAT. Okay. Oh yes, so somebody asked me whether we can have a video tutorial. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, so yes, today is just a very brief uh, description on how we can use it. So if you want to learn maybe in deep and uh, maybe we have to do by running the software and you also have to have the receiver and the software already installed at your site. So we can do how to say sort of a training, online training actually, but you need to have your systems ready at your site and maybe I make the same system at my site and we can have a, some sort of a online or some training. Yes, that is possible. Okay, so any more questions, anything? How can we establish entry clusters, server, and client communication? Oh, okay. This is again a big question. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I have to do it next time again. So in your area, is there somebody who is providing the entry cluster service or not? So actually we are going to establish our own entry cluster maybe around next month in Zoom. So I will establish my own entry cluster here in the university. So I think I can do this type of tutorial or after Zoom maybe. Okay, RTCM, yes, it contains all the correction data. The correction data at the base station, like you have a base station and uh, the, the, the station there is observing all those errors, satellite error, orbit error, and the clock error, and they are broadcasted to the rover in a standard format called the RTCM. This is for the real time correction data. So again, so if you really need to know the, all the, these details, so you have to buy the RTCM document because RTCM, this manual or the document where they list everything inside is not available freely. We have to buy it. So if you really want to learn everything inside the RTCM, please buy the RTCM document. It's available. Okay. But unless you are doing some, how to say, if you, are just, if you just want to use the, uh, the correction data, so you really don't have to know what are the things being broadcasted inside. So many receivers, uh, they now software, they can, like in RTK Leave, you can broadcast RTCM, you just select RTCM, and it will broadcast all the necessary information for you to the RTK. But if you want to learn how the RTCM message itself is made, which parameters and how it is made, uh, all these things, uh, even uh, I, I need to look at those documents. I, I don't remember all these things. I just use it. I, I, I don't care how they are made and what they include. So 
So in general, it's just the correction data at the base decision. And those correction data refers to the satellite RV data, we call the ephemeris data and the satellite cloud data. Okay, so if you don't have any more questions, so we'd like to stop here and please uh, send me your comments or your, your uh, how you find it, this type of thing, and whether you can hear clearly. Um, how, how, how you just send me some comments how you find it, okay, whether the sound is clear or not, because this is very important. And today's webinar. We have uh, we have now I see 34 participants. I think we have almost 50 because some of the participants uh, they are doing in the classroom, and I suppose that they just connect to one computer and they are listening in the classroom. So we don't see all 51, but we have uh, no 56 registered, and I can see 34 means I think we have at least 50 participants here. And we have the participants today from um, many different Asian countries and few from Europe and few from the Latin America. So especially I would like to know the quality of the sound and all this video and this screen, whether you can see or not from the participants from Latin America and Europe and maybe some other countries in Asia because some places we have not so we don't have good internet. And we chose Zoom because Zoom, we believe that it can work uh, nicely even with the low internet bandwidth and we need to evaluate. And if it is good enough, we will keep on using this tool with more features in future. And please attend the next uh, webinar on the uh, next webinar on 1st June and it Zoom by Professor Kubo on RTK. So he will give a very detail. And one more is 25 May is on a low cost receiver. So and after two weeks, I will have another uh, webinar on 25th May. This is about a low cost receiver. So I will show you uh, what type of receivers we can use and we have already developed some apps so I can give you the Android app and you can install in your Android device and if you have a uBlocks receiver so you can just connect and you can use for RTK. Okay, okay. Thank you, yes, Bianca. Okay, so thank you very much attending the webinar and hope to see you in the next one as well. And please send me your, your comments so that we, 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 we know how to, how to improve and how to make it better. Okay, so thank you.